I'm Dr. Scott Golars. I'm a vascular surgeon at Temple Heart and Vascular Institute. Uh, thoracic outlet syndrome comes in several varieties, the uh, least common of which is the arterial. Uh, many patients will present with venous complications where they have large swollen arms that happen suddenly and require more urgent operations. But by far and away, the most common type of thoracic outlet syndrome is neurogenic. And thousands and thousands of people suffer uh, with neurogenic thoracic outlet syndrome. Uh, and unfortunately, it's a very unrecognized uh, phenomenon. Typically, the patients are younger or of working age. Uh, these are folks that use their hands quite a bit, uh, very common in workers who perform the same type of activities over and over and over again. Uh, very often, these folks will have a history of having an injury to their shoulder or shoulder girdle. What most likely happens is that there's compression of the trunks uh, of the brachial plexus, which are all of the main nerves to the arm, shoulder, and chest. This compression usually takes place underneath the main collarbone, or what we refer to as the clavicle, and then uh, over what we call the first rib. In this area, there's a very small passage where the nerves and blood vessels must traverse. Uh, if there's irritation and the irritation is sustained, there can be scarring to the trunks uh, of the brachial plexus and this scarring feeds in on itself in a terrible cycle that causes more inflammation, more pain, and with no opportunity to rest from work, uh, worsening symptoms. And over time, they can become quite debilitating. Often the symptoms can be uh, pain, uh, numbness, uh, inability to use your hands or grip or write or even hold objects. Uh, in advanced cases, uh, even use of the hand can become extremely difficult. And because of the varied presentation of neurogenic thoracic outlet syndrome, it can uh, mimic other diseases. Uh, often patients will be uh, referred to and treated for orthopedic problems with the shoulder or the neck. Often uh, they'll be treated for uh, things as simple as headaches. Uh, patients can even be uh, treated for depression uh, if their symptoms are long enough standing and uh, they haven't received the type of care that they've needed. There's many tests that can be performed uh, really considering the type of thoracic outlet syndrome you have. Arterial thoracic outlet syndrome may require a CAT scan or even an angiogram. Venous thoracic outlet syndrome can require an ultrasound. Everyone will require a chest x-ray, but everyone that comes through the door gets a detailed history and a physical exam. Almost always, the first line for treatment in neurogenic thoracic outlet syndrome is physical therapy. Uh, an experienced physical therapist usually treats you for at least one, perhaps two, six-week sessions of physical therapy directed towards thoracic outlet syndrome. If you fail to improve or worsen with these therapies, we can consider operation at that point. If you do require operation, it's performed through a small incision above the collarbone, right about here. The incision is usually two to three finger breaths wide and heals very well. It's quite cosmetic. What we do through the incision is basically to relieve the compression of the structures as they move from the chest and into the arm. There's, small, or there's a small amount of space for all of these structures to slide through. Our goal in this operation is to make this a large space. We can then address the damage that's been done to the artery, to the vein, or most commonly to the trunks of the brachial plexus. These trunks of the brachial plexus are often entrapped in scar tissue. We remove this scarring and then we free the trunks of the brachial plexus, allowing the nerves to function properly and hopefully for that patient to regain good use of the hand and arm. A recovery from the surgery, it's generally tolerated extremely well. Uh, every patient is using their hand that night. So if you walked in using your hand that afternoon, you'll be using your hand that evening. Your hand and arm are free. You do not go home with a splint. Uh, a hospital stay is generally anywhere from one to two days. Most patients will return to work usually two weeks afterwards, depending on the type of work that you do. The general uh, rule of thumb is that all patients will receive intense uh, and physical therapy about a month after the operation uh, is performed. Three to six months after the operation, you'll probably have all the benefit that you will have from the operation.